The crisis is a political crisis that suddenly globalization, international trade is much less popular than it used to be. We all took it for granted, but now a group of people, perhaps who've done rather badly out of it, have uh, found voice in uh, various right-wing politicians. So suddenly we find that governments and oppositions, many of them are opposing trade deals and starting to ask questions about whether even the current amount of trade is the right one. These politicians who oppose globalization and worry about international trade are partly articulating a view from people who have not done very well from globalization. In the Western economies, people with fewer skills used to be able to do manual jobs. Those are now substantially done in the developing world. And these people have often not found alternative jobs. So they feel they're left behind. At the same time, globalization has been organized and more or less run by people from very elite industries who are doing spectacularly well. And we see almost obscene levels of salaries uh, to certain people. So if you're getting nothing out of it, you think the other guy is getting a huge amount, you're pretty grizzled and you're open to populism uh, of an anti-trade nature. People ask whether global trade needs reform, and the answer is that it clearly does. But the most important reform, I think, is internal to countries. Uh, the losers feel aggrieved and the gainers have gained extensively, so we need to think about redistributing the gains from trade through a variety of measures so that everybody essentially gains as we know in theory that they could. So the sort of policies that we need to address these problems are partly redistribution within the country. Uh, that may involve things like benefits, supporting people for longer who have lost their jobs. It may involve retraining. It may involve encouraging some industries to relocate to areas that have suffered, although in truth we're not very good at that. It also possibly means that some trade liberalizations don't need to go ahead so quickly because they will impinge on a small number of people very heavily, and that at the small cost of the rest of us, we can avoid uh, deep trouble for those people. It's a trade-off. We have to concern ourselves, we have a responsibility for everybody in society, and we need to run our trade policy such that we get the gains from trade, but without imposing huge losses on particular individuals. So the big news internationally is the so-called mega-regionals, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, uh, TPP, and the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, TTIP. TPP is a group of 12 countries led by the US, containing um, Australia, Japan, Indonesia, many other uh, Pacific countries. And it has been signed. The question is whether it's going to be ratified. The TTIP is an arrangement between the US and the EU, which is currently being negotiated. Uh, they talk about finishing the negotiations this year, but I wouldn't bet on that. I'm not a big fan of either of these arrangements. One reason is that they promote business interests above the interests of ordinary people. Uh, they offer, for instance, quite strong pa uh, patent protection so that firms can benefit from their intellectual property, but it's difficult for other poorer people to take advantage and learn the technologies. They also promote investor state dispute settlement which allow firms that feel that a government has let them down to sue that government uh, because the firm has lost some profits through a policy change. On the other hand, they do very little for workers who are losing their jobs as a result of import competition. It's not that import competition is bad, we benefit from cheaper goods, but that some people are suffering as a result of it and we need to do something about that. If we think back about who is opposing international trade and globalization, it is the very people who are losing jobs through competition of this sort. So a further objection is that it excludes China. The TPP has been designed to exclude China, if we're honest, and I think that TTIP is at least partly designed to ensure that the Europeans won't go off and sign an agreement with China, because in that case the US can threaten not to go forward with TTIP. It's a funny way of running a multilateral system to explicitly exclude the second largest player. I would much prefer to see a more cooperative approach to world trade.